While there are many women who have become famous for being mistresses to kings of France, such as Madame de Montespan or Madame du Barry, we tend to forget the one who made that position official. Agnès Sorel was the first woman to be given the title maîtresse en titre, or official mistress. Agnès was born in or around 1422 in Touraine, France. As with many people in history who rose to prominence later in their lives, we don't know much about Agnès' early life. Her family was probably minor nobility since she was able to get the position of maid of honor to the wife of René I of Naples, Isabella, Duchess Regnant of Lorraine. Agnès met Charles VII of France when she would have been around 20 years old and he was nearly twice her age. Soon after, Agnès got the position of lady-in-waiting to the Queen of France, Marie of Anjou. Sometime, Agnès and Charles began an affair and he loved her so much that he proclaimed that he was going to leave his pregnant wife for Agnès. Now, everyone knew the king's mistress was Agnès, but she still did not leave the queen's service. After the birth of Agnès' first daughter, Marie Marguerite de Valois, Charles gave Agnès the official title of maîtresse en titre, official mistress, so she became the first woman to hold the office. Even though there were many kings with many mistresses long before Agnès, Agnès was not just his mistress, she helped King Charles with many things. As Charles' family had lost their throne during the Hundred Years' War, Agnès would help him raise money to fund the war from the nobles. Agnès turned him from a depressed man into a strong king ready to keep fighting for his crown. She was even seen as succeeding Joan of Arc as the woman who counseled him. Charles gave Agnès the Château de Beauté. Because she owned the Château, Agnès became known as the Dame de Beauté, meaning Lady of Beauty. The king gifted Agnès many things, including lots of jewelry. One of those pieces may have been the first cut diamond. But the most famous and scandalous thing about Agnès was her fashion choices. Agnès introduced low-cut dresses to the French court, and that turned into her essentially just unlacing her bodice and letting her breasts show. Some ladies started emulating it, while others thought that Agnès' way of dressing was just too scandalous that they couldn't even be near it. The king kept gifting her jewels, properties, everything Agnès could have wanted. Since Agnès was now one of the richest ladies in the kingdom, she dressed extravagantly and would sometimes even appear better dressed than the queen, whom she was still a lady-in-waiting to. Agnès would wear her diamond necklaces with her clothes, but as she was non-royal, she wasn't supposed to wear diamonds. It's not like she cared though. Some courtiers wanted the king to make Agnès stop dressing the way she did, but he told them to go do their work and stop fretting about his mistress's fashion choices. Agnès was even painted a few times with her breasts just the way she left them every day. The portrait, Virgin and Child Surrounded by Angels, depicts Agnès as the Virgin Mary. Her complexion is extremely pale in this portrait and the background is full of red and blue angels. Agnès is also holding a child in the portrait. She held great influence over the king, which she actually used to help him. There were many important reforms that occurred during Agnès' time as mistress, probably only because of her. People at court began abandoning the queen's circle for Agnès, as it was clear that she was the one who had influence over King Charles. The future Louis XI, then the Dauphin, wasn't happy that his father had a mistress who had a tremendous amount of influence over him. He hated Agnes personally as well, which makes sense since his mother was the sideline queen. And according to one source, he once chased Agnes with a dagger. Louis XI was unsuccessful in stabbing Agnes, and she ended up having three children, all daughters. Marie Marguerite de Valois, Countess of Tibor. Charlotte de Valois, whose son Louis de Brézé married another very influential royal mistress, Diane de Poitiers, and Jean. When she was pregnant with her fourth child, Agnes was traveling to meet Charles, who was on campaign, and she went into labor on the journey. Agnès and her newborn child died on February 9th, 1450. She was only 28 years old. Charles suspected that his son or a specific minister had poisoned Agnès. He may actually have been right. Recently, Agnès' body was exhumed and high levels of mercury were found in her body. In her time, mercury was used to treat various illnesses, so it may have been being used for medical reasons, or maybe Agnès was being slowly poisoned. Charles was devastated at the loss of his beloved mistress, but Agnès' cousin, Antoinette, soon took her place. Antoinette could actually have been the one to poison her cousin. Agnès had an amazing and luxurious life as Charles' official mistress, and who wouldn't want to wear diamonds and be powerful? It's entirely possible that Antoinette poisoned her cousin to take it all for herself. 
We may never truly know who killed Agnes Sorel, if anyone killed her at all.